everybody. Uh, so I had some people asking uh, how could I make my own escape room and so today I'm just gonna show you how you can make a simple little escape room using nothing more than HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so this is the escape room here. Uh, if you click on the door, nothing happens. If you click on the lock, it says it's locked. If you click on the padlock, uh, this is a combination lock. So you have to enter in the correct six letter word in order to get out. Um, if you enter the wrong word, it's locked. If you cancel, it's locked. The only way to get out is if you pick up a key, unlock the lock, and then enter the right code. And then a little button appears. And you can either move on to the next uh, escape room or you can leave the room and win the game. All right, so there are many things you can use when you want to make uh, HTML files, CSS files, JavaScript files. Visual Studio Code is probably the most popular code editor out there, and it's free. So if you have a Windows computer or a Mac, uh, Visual Studio Code is a great program to use. My students are all on Chromebooks, and so you know not only is it the Chrome OS, but also they're locked down by the school. So I think I'm just going to make this project in the same environment that they make their projects in. I'm going to go to code.org. And if you don't have an account, you can create an account. And my students, you're used to going to the dashboard and continuing with your lessons, but you can actually just come here and just create something. Um, there are different modes, but what we want today is we want to create an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript project. And so there's lots of different choices here, and if you're visiting this at a different time maybe years from now you know this page might look totally different I want to view the full list though because what I'm looking for is web lab web lab is the one that is concerned with HTML and CSS and even though it doesn't have um, you can't make JavaScript files you can just write your JavaScript in JavaScript tags in your HTML page so we start off with the index, index HTML and, and style CSS. And we need to make a, um, a room, right? So here's the thing about the body when you're doing this body tag. The, the body, you know, your whole HTML document is in the body. But if there's nothing in the body, or if there's only a little bit in the body, it doesn't necessarily take up the whole page unless you tell it to take up the whole page. So I'm going to come over here to my style sheet and see where it says body background white. Let's just change that to body, black, uh, body background black. Okay, we can see that it does take up the whole page. I'm actually kind of surprised because usually we have to put something in like width equals 100% and height equals 100%. So that's just a little insurance for me there. And then, you know, it would be nice if we could make this 
escape room always take up the whole screen. You know, instead of having like annoying borders around. Part of the way we can do that is we can go to, we can tell it we want a margin of zero. Uh, and if you wanted it to be 10, you would have to say 10 pixels so that it knows what the units are. But if you're just doing zero, you know, zero is zero no matter what the units are. So you can just leave it like that. Margin zero, padding zero. And that just makes sure that there's no, you know, that everything goes all the way out to the edge. And then I'm going to put another div in here. And this div is going to be, you know, basically where the escape room experience lives inside of. So I'm just going to call this room. And I've had some issues, you know, it's very important. The placement is very important in the escape room. If you're going to put a vase on a table, then you need that vase to show up on the table every time the page loads. And so I'm going to be very strict with the placement of this stuff. And maybe later I can come back and, and play around with it. But for now, I'm going to take this room element and because I am referring to something by its ID I gotta use that hashtag sign so here's the rules for the room div and I'm gonna give it a well let's start out with margin zero again padding zero just to make sure it doesn't act weird I'm going to give it a width of 1440. This is a pretty standard, let's see, and a height of 900 pixels. Oops, I forgot my units, pixels. This is a pretty standard aspect ratio. A lot of times when, when the width is 1440, the height is also 900. It's what we call a 16 by 10 ratio. And I like that because it feels a little bit closer to you know like a piece of paper as opposed to like a widescreen movie kind of thing and now if I were to say you know background color oh I don't know red it should give me a red rectangle kind of thing and of course it's not Room, background color, margin, padding, width, height. Oh, there we go. Just needed, just needed a little coaxing there. And so now, you know, the only reason I changed that background color to red is so you could see, otherwise it's invisible. <clears throat> if I don't give it a color, it's invisible. But now you can see that this div takes up the whole screen, or at least takes up see can we find the edge nope so right now this room is taking up the whole screen now one thing I like to do even though you can see a preview of your code um, it actually would be better if we went ahead and opened up a separate window so we could see what the final thing is actually gonna look like so let's just go up here to share and this is gonna give us that code that we can send to people and they can see our project but we can use this also so that we can take a look at our project so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna I like to open things up in an incognito window just so that it shows it to me the way other people are gonna see it and not you know I know there's not something in my cache that's gonna make it look different and there it is that room div is taking up the whole screen perfect but we don't want the room to be red we want something that actually looks like a room right so let's let's go ahead and draw a room real quick now I'm gonna change this 
to the size that I want. And that was in pixels. It was 1440 by 900. And you can do whatever you want. You can make your little room here. I'm going to go kind of quick. Just want something that looks like a basic room. And you can make it go off the edges. When it saves this as a picture, it's just going to cut it down to wherever the, the edges are. So it's going to cut all the excess off. And I'll give it kind of a red, red carpet kind of feel. This one, I'm going to take the borders off and give it a light gray. And then, you know, because of the rules of perspective, I'm going to make it so that the, the lines on the top and bottom of the wall, you know, they're all converging on some center point way off in the distance. Now I could grab this handle and start spinning it, but I like to open up this format options menu. Probably going to be using this several times, so I'll just leave it open. And this way you can do a real quick 90 degree turn. I'm just going to put that in that corner there. And I'm going to make this just a smidge darker so you can kind of see where one wall ends and the other begins. And then sometimes I like to just um, extend this wall out here and then it'll just look like we're just looking at you know half the room. And it gives me more wall space. Whenever I need more wall space I just don't put that other wall in. But today, I think I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And I'm going to come over here and flip it so that I can put it on this other side. Remember, this excess is going to get trimmed off. And then, what color should my ceiling be? I'm going to hit control shift down arrow to move this into the background. You can also come up here to arrange order and send to back. Control shift down arrow, send to back. I'm going to give this a lighter color. All right, good enough for government work. Now you could do other things. You could, you know, put pictures on the walls. You could even put your door in this background image if you wanted to. But that's probably only best if you're not gonna, if you don't need to click on the door. If you need to click on the door, I wouldn't make it part of your background because you want it to be its own separate thing. Anything you want to click on probably should be its own separate image. All right, that's. I think that's pretty much good for what I want. Let's come down here to download PNG. Downloads. And I'm going to put that in pictures. In fact, let's see here. Let's just make a new folder for escape room. Escape room, pictures, escape room. And now, if we open this up, 
we should see. Yeah, we see that all that excess has been trimmed off and we just have what looks like a room. I mean, you know, by all means, if you want to take some time and make this look a lot better, please do it. But that is good enough for what I want. And so you come back up here uh, to your uh, code.org project and you can add images just by clicking on this button. And the nice thing about it is it's exactly 1440 by 900, exactly what I wanted. So inside of this room div, well, there's two ways I could do it. I could make this an image inside the div, or I could come over here to the CSS, and I could just, instead of this background color, I could give it a background image. And what's that background image going to be? Well, it's going to be URL. We're going to go into URL mode. And then double quotation marks. And then I just type in whatever the name of that file is. And code.org, if it sees that you're typing something and it, knows, it recognizes the name, it'll just give you something you can choose. Uh, I need that quote inside, though. I'm not sure why it's outside. And there you go. Now, see, this is why we opened up that other window, because it's a little bit difficult to see in this tiny, tiny preview pane. But if we go back over here and reload, it gives us our room. All right, next we need a door. So let's open up a new Google Drawing. And you, you might want to make this 1440 by 900 also. Even though the final one, the, when, we make, when we save this door as a picture, it's not going to be 1440 by 900. But if you do this, if you make the canvas this size, then you can you know how big the room is going to be and you can use that you know to kind of when you're drawing your door like oh how big do I want the door to be and you probably want it to be you know if this is the room the door would be something probably like this size right in this escape room the door is going to be like the main focal point of the game and then just make a door you can make a wood door But I think we're going to make a metal door. Now, I used gray for the wall earlier, so I'm going to make like a really. I'm going to try and find a really dark gray, even darker than that. Let's try that. And I don't need a border color. Let's just throw a couple of, I don't know, doors usually have, you know, stuff on them, hardware, oops. Put that on there, and if, if you want to go in there and do fine detail work, use this magnifying glass and just get in there. And I only want it a teeny, teeny, tiny bit wider than the door itself, so. There we go, and then let's go ahead and grab some hinges. And use a rounded shape for that. And what color are the hinges gonna be? I don't know, like a gray probably. 
something like that. Copy and paste. And then let's go ahead and write exit on this door. <clears throat> Now, if you want something to be centered on the door, a little trick is to center it inside the text box and just make the text box as wide as the door. And then the word will be centered on the door. Mm. That would be a good font. Yeah, I could spend hours looking for fonts. Mm, impact. Yeah, I don't like any of these, but I'm sure you don't want to watch me hunt for fonts for 20 minutes. All right, I don't know. I don't like that one, but let's go. Um, I'm also going to put, okay, so uh, in this escape room, I'm going to have a key lock, and I'm going to have a combination lock. And so if you have a combination lock, you know, there has to be like um, those little bracers or whatever that are mounted to the door so that when you put the combination lock on, you know, that it's got something that fastens it to the door. So I'm just going to put, actually there's a shape that would be perfect for this, this shape that has, um, Two corners cut off. I'm going to make it so that it hangs off the door a little bit. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to extend this even more. Because what I'm thinking of, it's usually like a little hinge kind of thing. So I'm going to use my magnifying glass. I'm going to go in here for some more detail work. And what would a, what would a hinge look like? In fact, you know what? I'm going to shorten this after all and get another square right here. And grab some rounded rectangles. And make this just a wee bit darker here. I don't know. Actually, maybe that's too dark. But, oh well. All right. Those ended up being a little bit too long, so I'm going to select all of them. And I'm going to shorten them up just a little bit. And then you can see that they're not evenly spaced. So I'm going to come up here to Arrange, Distribute, Vertically. And this is going to make them evenly spaced up and down. 
If I wanted them evenly spaced left and right, I could do horizontally. Now they're perfectly evenly spaced, but that still doesn't look quite right. How's that look? Mm. Want it to be noticeable, but not too noticeable. All right. And then there would normally be a little uh, hole here, right? Well, I can't make a hole in a shape. But what I can do is I can make a square right here. That's the exact same color of the door, and it'll kind of look like there's a hole in there. Like that, and then there's usually yet another little thing that comes out. Right here, right? Now, if we were going to try and give this a 3D perspective, mm, be nice to be able to skew this, but you know, this is just an example. If you want to make look make it look really awesome, you'd probably want to use a better graphics program, something like uh, Photoshop or PaintShop Pro or something like that. All right, and then I gotta have some sort of hole in here. So copy and paste. All right, it's bothering me a little bit because you and I both know that if this was accurate you'd be able to see part of that metal in there but oh well <laughs> hmm oh well and there is our door and we're not going to put the locks on here because those are going to be handled separately. All right. File download, PNG, ping. And uh, so right now I don't like it because it's downloading everything to the downloads folder. Let's go into settings and change that real quick. Search settings, download. Ask where to save each file before downloading, yes. Now it'll ask us where we want to save it instead of just putting everything in the downloads folder. All right, so let's add our door to our project. Div ID room. Now I can't really think of a reason to put that door in this room, or can I? I don't know. Let's try it. It the door is in the room, so let's let's try making a new div. ID door. And then you know what? Okay, I'm going to try to simplify this a little bit. 
Instead of making a div for each item, what happens if I just put that image in there? Oh, I didn't upload it yet. Add image. The door. I'm going to move that door, though. I'm going to move it to pictures, escape room. All right, so now image source equals door PNG. And it added it. Oh, shoot. I forgot to make it smaller. Okay, we got this door over here. If we save it like this, then it's going to make the picture this big and all this stuff will be see-through but still the picture will be this big I don't really need it that big so I'm just gonna grab all this stuff and move it all the way up into this top corner you know the main reason we wanted it big to start off with is we just wanted to get the size correct so now I'm gonna grab this and make it smaller there you go it doesn't really need to be any bigger than that and now I can file save as PNG It'll ask where I want to save it, and now I can say pictures, escape room. Now, after I've chosen one, the location, it'll probably save everything in the escape room folder, which will be nice. So, door, this will save over that. Yes, I want to replace it. Now let's come up here. Um, let's delete this door. And then upload door again. Now you can see all that extra stuff has been cut off. Actually, I left a bunch of stuff on the sides. But that's not a huge deal. Okay, so there's our door. It's very high up off of the, the ground, but we're going to fix that with CSS later. All right, what else do we need? Well, we need a doorknob, and we need a padlock, a, co a combination lock, right? So, okay, combination lock. Let's just draw a normal padlock. And for this one, okay, I don't know what size this canvas is, but let's go in here to page setup. We don't need it to be as big as the whole room, and we could do it the same way we did that last time, just so, so we had something to compare it to. But, you know, if the whole room is 1440 wide and 900 tall, we could probably safely get away with just, I don't know, like maybe like a 400 by 400 canvas. Uh, I don't know about that. You know what? What the heck? Let's just do the same thing we did last time. For scale, let's do 1400 by 900. We're not going to use nearly all of that. But it'll help us out for scale. All right, so now let's make a little padlock. Which one of these shapes looks most like a padlock? Mm, maybe a rounded rectangle? I probably want that padlock to be, I don't know, not huge. Uh oh. Where'd my padlock go? <laughs> hmm. Um, that's kind of weird. not letting me draw shapes hmm 
All right, for some reason it wasn't letting me draw shapes there, so I just copied and pasted a shape off of the other one. And you can change the shapes. If you just right click on it and go to change shape, you can just change it. All right, does that look like about the right size of a padlock? That actually looks kind of large to me, but it's just a silly game. And I feel like this should be a brass lock. Let's do a gradient here. Mm, and of course, I don't like the gradients. So let's make a custom gradient real quick. This one. Wish it was a little bit more. Oh, well, I don't need it to be transparent, that's for sure. I want brassy, brassy. I don't know, does that look brassy? Yeah, I think that's okay. And you know what? Let's go ahead and add another stop. I want I want a stripe going through the middle. I don't want like a gradient from light to dark. I want a stripe going through the middle. And so let's make this this color and this this color. And don't necessarily want that stripe right through the center. Actually, that doesn't look too bad right there. Now let's try that. And of course, it's the wrong way. But that's okay. this to be just a teeny tiny bit rounded and then I want to give it a little bit of dimension how am I gonna do that a lot of padlocks are not flat on the front they're kind of rounded what would happen if I gave this a little oval And I can make this oval look just like this lock if I click on the lock and do a format paint right here. Ah, of course, it does it the wrong way. All right. I don't know if that's what I want or not, but whatever. <laughs> Good enough for government work, right? And then we just got to make sure we put some sort of uh, lock on here. Now there is a shape on here. It's kind of a, this kind of a shape. Oh gosh, that looks terrible already. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to make this a little skinnier. Let's make it gray and it doesn't need an outline. Hmm. 
And then what I'll do is I'll just grab two rectangles and extend this down. Oops. I already did it. And I'll just grab these and bring them to the front using Control Shift up. Ah, that doesn't look quite right, though, does it? Should be right in the center. Oh, man. That's all right. I think we can do it. Um, we'll pull this in just a smidgen more and bring this up like that. And copy and paste this. Mm. Oh my gosh, it looks terrible. Terrible. Now I kind of want to give this a little outline, maybe like that. Hi, Dios mío. Okay, this is not <laughs> great, but. might have to do for today. All right, and then this is not going to look right until we zoom in a little bit and give these some rounded bottoms. like so and then if you really wanted to be anal <laughs> uh, I'm gonna copy and paste this I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna make this a very very dark almost brown or almost black version of brown come on baby Just to show that this is going into a hole. Control copy, control B. Like that. Mm, except, ooh, yeah, this would look like that, wouldn't it? Because it's going down, down below. All right. How does that look? Oh, it looks terrible, but I think people will get the idea. Whatever. All right. So let's go ahead and move this up to the corner. Very corner up here. And then resize our canvas because we don't need all that extra stuff. Now it won't let you go. I don't know. There's a limit for some reason. It will not let you 
make this less wide. I don't know. Can you change that with the page setup? I don't know if you can or not, but we're just going to drive on. Download is a ping. <clears throat> Save. And let's put that on our door. Well, we're not going to put it right on our door. We're just going to add it into our file. So let's do image source equals. And I got to upload my image. Combo lock. And as soon as I start typing it, it suggests something for me. Now I need that doorknob, right? That key lock. So let's resize this. Pixels, 1440, 900. And then let's see, a door lock, door lock, door lock, door lock. Um, Hmm. Not this one. Kind of looks like a door lock. And then what color would it be? It'd probably be like a real deep gunmetal color. What color is my door? Oh. Door is already kind of a dark gunmetal. Mm. Well, let's make it a really light color then. See what that does. That looks about the right size. Let's zoom in. Grab it. Door knob. Use a gradient for this. Now, if you wanted to give it some perspective, you could push it over here. And I don't know, you could put a cylinder or something under it. be a little too much perspective even just putting it off to the side could give you some perspective but I don't think we need that right now and then of course we need a little keyhole right that's super important because we need to find the key and use the key on the doorknob to get the door open for our escape room that should be pretty easy if you look at a keyhole shape let me just pull one up here keyhole You know, you can make this shape really easy. It's just a circle and a triangle, really. So, shapes. Triangle and make this solid black. If you give yourself a thick border, then you will get a rounded rectangle, a rectangle with rounded corners. Something like that. I don't know. What does it look like? A three. That might have been a little bit overboard. Now this is kind of an old style keyhole, isn't it? What if we wanted a modern? Okay, I'm getting a little bit, I'm getting a little bit crazy here. But humor me for a second. <laughs> if you were happy with this keyhole, 
then you could totally just do it like this. That would be fine, of course, but, hmm. If we wanted something a little more modern looking. Something like this, this kind of thing. Something with concentric circles and a little, little slot. Okay, I'm gonna try and do that real quick here. You could totally do this. I'm gonna see if I can do better though. All I should need to do is put a circle here and the fill will be the same thing as this light color. Mm. Or should it be a different color? Not really sure. It's got to be way closer to black. And then sometimes you can actually see the little pins in there. So let's zoom in for some detail work and control copy, control V, make this a lighter color. I don't know, right there. Or could do that kind of thing. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do this, control copy. I'm gonna put this right up here and make it just a little bit fatter. And this can come right up here. Uh, oh, it's behind it. Okay, I'm gonna bring it up here like this. How's that look? Yeah, it looks pretty good, right? Doesn't look like it's centered. Uh, should it be above the door or below the door? I mean the uh, the knob. I mean, I feel like it should be above it. All right, let's try it like that. Am I okay with that knob being so much darker than everything else? Uh, maybe a lighter gradient, huh? Kind of like that. Hmm.
No, it's gonna have to be it unless what happens if I oh no 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 no. Alright, that's fine. Good enough. Download as a ping into our escape room folder, save. Add image. Key lock. Add another image tag. This time it's going to be key lock. So now you can see all of our images are showing up, but we definitely need to work on the positioning, right? We also need that key. So let's make a key really quick. You can make an old skeleton type of key, or since we're trying to be more modern, let's try to do a modern key really quick. Modern key, what would that look like? You know, I kind of feel like, hold on, let me look at my keys. Well, I guess I don't need to look at my keys. I have this picture over here that would probably have exactly what I need on it. Mm, I could do this round kind of key. I was thinking of more like a house key shape, but a round key would do, I suppose. All right, so let's get a circle. Oh, you know what? For this one, you know, the key's going to be so small. I don't know if it even really matters, the scale. Well, yeah, this is how I've been doing it the whole time. I might as well keep doing it this way. And this key is going to be pretty small, so. Man, I don't know why I, it won't let me draw shapes. That's super weird. And then I can change that shape to a circle. make it very small now I'm going to zoom in and I know this is way too big so I'm going to make it even smaller now and what color should it be let's make it kind of like a light color in fact, it's metal, so it's shiny. And then let's get that shape that has the... And then, you know, keys always have the little um, the teeth on them. So let's try a little trapezoid for that. Let's see if I can zoom in here anymore.
Hmm, this looks like it's a different color. Uh, I'm going to double click on the Format Painter, and this will allow me to choose more than one thing. So I can click on this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one. Now they're all the same color. And now this, we just have to move up and down a little bit. Um, then up. Come on, Bessie. Up. Down. Up. Down. All right. Is that a good key? Uh, I feel like it's not. But. Hmm. Oh well. Now it would be nice if I could punch a hole through this and then it would be see-through, but you can't really make see-through stuff very easily in Google Drawings. You could make it easier in a, in a better graphics program, but not really in Google Drawings. Now because I'm calling this the blue key, I'm gonna um, gotta give this some sort of... Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen those things you can buy at the key store, but you can put them on your keys just so you can remember which key is which. So I can actually give this a little... Um, and this is just part of a circle. So if I move this one over here and this one over here, it's just going to give me half of a circle. And since I'm calling this the blue key, I don't really like any of these blues. All right, there you go. There's the blue key. Now you could copy this circle. Put it up here. Doesn't look great, but whatever. All right. That up in the top corner, shrink this canvas down as small as we can. It's not going to let us shrink it down any smaller. Boy, I don't know why it doesn't let you do that, but whatever. All right, file. Mm. And I can't change this page setup because if you if you try to change these dimensions, it's going to stretch this out and try to make it fit. Google Drawings, not the best graphics program to use, but you know what? It's free. You don't have to download anything, so I have my students use it for a lot of stuff. And you can do a lot of stuff with it. All right. Add image. Blue key. There it is. And now we just need to copy this. And there is our blue key. All right, now we've got all of our images. Why do I have two doorknobs? Hmm. Image source, blue key, key lock.
Well, that's weird. It's a blue key over here. Okay, super, super weird. Now we just got to position these things. And we'll start with the door. I think I'm going to put the door on the left side here. And in order to do that, we need to use some CSS. So let's go to CSS. And I've got this, got this image, and the source is door. But I can't grab that image and give it instructions and give it commands just from its source. In order to give it instructions, it needs to have an ID, either an ID or a class. And so I'm just going to give this an ID of door, this an ID of combo lock, this an ID of key lock, and this an ID of blue key. Of course, you could have more than one key. You could have red key, and orange key, etc., etc., etc. So now I can come up here and I can go to, uh, remember when you grab it by, your, by the ID, you want to use that hashtag. Let's write some rules for door. Well, normally a web page is just going to put things uh, where it thinks it makes sense to put things. And it's going to start from the top left corner usually. And the default positioning is what we call static and some people describe static position as like basically not being positioned anywhere in particular the web page just makes you know hopefully smart decisions about where things go on the page and it can change especially as someone you know uh, makes their screen smaller or larger it might change where things fall on the page we don't want that. We want it to be exactly in the same place every time compared to the rest of the room. So we're going to use absolute positioning. For the door. And in fact, we're probably going to use absolute positioning for everything. Um, the door, the lock, the key lock, the key. And so if we don't want to write this five times, what we could actually do we can, because we've got this thing called room and all of these images are what we call children of this div, right? these images are inside this div. So we say they are the children of this div. And so these are the rules for the room, but we can make rules for the room's children. So everything that is a room, oh, sorry, a child of room So anything, anything that is a child of this room thing will get these rules. And this is where we can put this position absolute. And now we don't have to write that five times. Now all of those things get absolute positioning. So now we don't need this, but we will. Oh, and you know what? Let's also just go ahead and give this margin zero and padding zero and that gives all of them margin zero and padding zero but for this door okay so we chose position absolute and it every now everything is up in the top left corner obviously that's not where we want it we want to move these things out and down into the room 
And the way we do that is by spe specifying how far from the top something should be. Um, and I don't know, I'm just going to guess for now. Maybe 200 pixels from the top and 200 pixels from the left. And it looks like that was not nearly enough. Now we could guess and check all night here, but there is an easier way. I can open up the console tab. And if you're on a school Chromebook, you can't do this, by the way. <laughs> if you're on a school Chromebook, you can't do this. Uh, at least that's what I've been told by students. But what I can do is I can I can click on this arrow and click on this door and that shows me the HTML for this page and it shows me the CSS that's determining where this page is and how it acts. And as you can see here's that 200 left and 200 top that we specified. And I can just click on this and choose the up arrow and look. Just moves it for me. Then I can click on this and use the up and down. It's not the left and right arrows, it's the up and down arrows. And put this door wherever the heck I want. Oh man, that that I don't like how that brace blends in with the wall. So that was bad, bad planning on my part. If this wasn't a demo, I would go back and change that. But now we can go back, and these are the these are the right numbers to use: 289 and 305. And voila, that door is right where we want it. And we're going to use the same method to position all those other things. So we got door, combo lock, key lock, and blue key. But these are not the actual numbers we want. Where where do we want? Hmm, the key lock is probably the thing that we should position next. So let's go back over here and refresh and click on this so that we can choose the key lock. And here's our top and our left. And let's just go ahead and. Boy, does that lock look too big to you? I think I might have made that lock too big. Actually, we can fix that. Yeah, that looks way too big, huh? All right, well, we can change it. We could specify a width property. And in order to do this quickly and efficiently, it'd be really helpful to know exactly what the dimensions of this image are. And so I can go to my escape room and find that image. It's the key lock image, right? And I just hover over it and it tells me it's 99 wide by 178 tall. And if I just change one of these numbers, If I just change this, if I use my arrow keys and just make it go down, the computer is going to automatically calculate what the height should be. So it looks like the width should be 74 pixels. It needs to be resized. But that's going to make this number change, right? And that's going to make this number change. All right, 
There we go. 507, 565, and 73. Oops, doggone it. That was for the blue key. <laughs> 507. 565 five with 73 pixels. Don't forget your units. Okay, blue key's in the wrong place now, but that's okay. Why, but this code.org it takes it takes a while for the code to work its way through the pipes all right we don't want that blue key right next to the lock we want that blue key I don't know way over here on the floor somewhere and of course this was a any this was a respectable escape room the key would probably be hidden somewhere but that's okay key okay blue key well, we want this way over on the other side of the room so let's go ahead and say remember the whole thing is only 900 tall so, I don't know, maybe 800. And then to the left, it's only 1440 wide. Let's try 11 something. And I do not need this width modifier here. And now you can see that blue key is all the way over there on the ground. Now the way it's sitting there, oh my gosh, it kind of looks like it's just like standing, doesn't it? Like it's balanced on its on the very tip. So let's turn it sideways. The way we turn it sideways, when you when you turn an object in space or when you do something to it, we say that you are changing its transform. And in CSS, there's a lot of things you can do to an object's transform. We're just going to go ahead and rotate that key. I don't know, like 45 degrees. That looks a little bit better. I don't know, maybe you could rotate it. You know, 90 degrees, 90 degrees would be perfectly sideways. Now, I don't think I want it perfectly sideways, but maybe 80 degrees? Yeah. looks a little bit better you can also skew it uh, but then it looks really flat that's good enough for now then finally we just got to put that padlock on there right and then we will be done with the with this part okay, and there's our key over there in the corner padlock Remember, you got to click this arrow, and then you can come over here and don't need to move that down too much. I don't know. What do you think? Is this too big? Do we need to resize it? Oh, shoot. I forgot. I was going to add... I'm going to add something to that padlock. So you can see it's it looks weird because it's 
part of it should be covered up by that um, that thing. So the perfectionist in me wants to go. Oops, it's all my. Um, there's my door. Wanted to grab these and copy them and go back to that combo lock. Oopsies, what happened there? Mm. I want to do something like this. But that doesn't look right either. What if I This circle and this square, and copied and pasted them. This doesn't look right. Did I group those? Hmm. Actually, I might not even need this thing. Hmm. That's weird. I don't know why it changed that. Hmm. What if I did this? What if I took these and put them all the way back behind everything? And then just got a rectangle. Went like that. And formatted it like that. Wait a minute. That's not right. Can go down to here. How about that? Does that look right? 
Yeah, I think that does look right. So let's try and file, save as, or download, sorry. And let's call this combo lock two, but I don't need parentheses all over the place. Let's put two. Combo lock two. And then combo lock demo two. All right, I'm pretty sure that that is all I need to do. Now let's come back over here to our page and refresh. Oh, I didn't put these numbers in, did I? Dug on it. Okay. And I think I said I wanted width 70 pixels. All right, that looks a little bit better. <laughs> So what are our numbers? 386, 574, and 70. 70 oh my goodness oops what is this oh this is okay this is the one that I was <laughs> practicing on for this tutorial to get ready for this tutorial so whoops combo lock top Three six. Left five seventy four. And then we wanted to add a width property. And that was seventy four as well, right? No, just seventy. Okay, there we go. Ugh. Well, maybe not. Now, why? Oh, it's just because I 70x. It's supposed to be 70px. There we go. All right, that doesn't look too bad. All right, so now we've got everything positioned exactly where we want it. Now we just got to make this stuff clickable, and we got we want to do something. Um, let's go ahead and real quick, we've got our index page for our escape room. Let's make another HTML page real quick, and this is just going to be our uh, you've escaped page. And 
you know, for this tutorial, all we really need is, I don't know, any, anything. I'm just going to put a H1 here. And then when you get out, it's just going to say, you escaped the room. Congratulations. And so this is where we're trying to go. This is where we're trying to get to, is this page that says, you've escaped the room. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's go ahead and make a big... Uh, button and when we click this button okay well hold on a second so this button's going to say get out of here. And when we click this button, we're going to we're going to do something. Well, what are we going to do? Well, we want to go to new.html because that's our, that's our new page that we just made, right? This code, this is not code, this does not work. This is just kind of a note to us that this is what we eventually want. We want to go to new HTML eventually. But here's the thing. You can see this button now, I think. Should be here somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. Get out of here doesn't do anything right now this button first of all let's make it a lot bigger with CSS width equals 200 pixels and height equals I don't know 120 pixels okay, now it's a lot bigger ooh I don't like those proportions though let's make that more like 80 escape width height alright so this is the button that's gonna get us out of here but we don't want it to show up until the person has unlocked all the locks. So we're going to give this a property of visible. Is it visible or visibility? Visibility. Okay, visibility equals... Okay, there's a couple choices we can have. We could have it be visible, which is normal, or we could have it be hidden. And that turns it off so that no one can see it. I'm making a liar out of me right now, though. Visibility equals hidden. <laughs> button ID escape button ID escape with height visibility hidden Did I do it right? So 
CSS visibility. Visibility equals hidden. Oh, maybe because I put it in quotation marks? Is that why? <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. That's why. Now it's gone. See? So now we can control it with the code. Once all the locks are unlocked, we can, we can control it with the code and tell it to come back. And then the user can click on it. But before then, they will not see it. And they can't. It's, it's not just invisible. Like, you can't even click on it. All right, so now we can start writing our JavaScript. And this is not HTML and this is not CSS. This is something completely different known as JavaScript. And often we write JavaScript in its own file, but for some reason WebLab won't let us do that. And so we're going to write all of our JavaScript in here in these little tags right here. So the first thing we should probably do is make the door clickable and tell the, the computer to do something when we click on the door. And then we should probably make the lock clickable and the padlock clickable. And so let's go ahead and create some functions function try door and you have to have these parentheses here and you have to have these curly braces here function try door and when someone clicks on the door in fact I'm going to give this an on click attribute right here and what should happen when they click on the door well the try door method should be run or sorry function the try door function should be run I'm gonna copy and paste this into the on click method and now when you click on that something's gonna happen what's gonna happen well nothing yet because we haven't put anything in there in fact let's go ahead and just put a console.log and this will tell us if it's at least working. Uh, what should it say, though? Uh, it should say, I don't know, you clicked the door. Then we need two more of these, so I'm going to copy and paste. And this is going to be try key lock and try combo lock so when should we run the try key lock function well when the key lock is clicked when should we run the try combo lock function well, when the combo lock function is clicked. All right, so let's go test that out. Remember, it sometimes takes a little while for it to get updated with the new information, but we could try it. All right, when I click on this door, you should see a message over here in the console. Console log in the console should say, you clicked the door. When we click on the lock, it should say, crap. I didn't change the message, did I? <laughs> you clicked the door. You clicked the door. You clicked the door. Okay. You clicked the key lock. You clicked the combo lock all right now when I reload and try again 
you click the door, you click the combo lock, you click the key lock. Now we also should do something for the blue key, even though it's not a test. But something does need to happen when we click on the blue key. A function pick up blue key. All right, so what should happen when someone um, well, let's start out with the pick up the blue key because there's really only one thing that can happen there. Um, someone picks up the blue key and let's go ahead and declare some variables right here. First of all, do you have the blue key when you first enter the room? No, you don't have the blue key when you first enter the room. And false, true and false, are words that the computer recognizes right away. We don't have to teach it that. It already knows that. So that means we don't have to put quotation marks around them. Okay, so variable has blue key is false at the beginning of the game. And so for this, when we pick it up, then uh, blue, or sorry, has blue key will be changed to true. Because we do have the blue key now. And we don't need quotes for that because the computer knows the word true. Be careful, don't put var here. Do not put var here. You only need that when you are teaching the computer that there's a new word. This isn't a new word because we declared it up here. So it already knows what's going on here. Just call it by name. So has blue key equals true. Um, I don't know, you could put a message here and so now it's gonna give you a pop-up box that says you pick up a blue key and put it in your pocket could it be that easy? And then when someone, um, when someone clicks on the key lock, if they don't have the key, so if has blue key is false, now if, if they do have the blue key, then there should be should be a variable up here variable key lock is locked now we need these quotes because the computer doesn't know what locked is that's something I'm making up I'm making up this concept of being locked or unlocked 
And so this variable key lock is going to be locked at first. And variable combo lock is going to be locked at first. And then down here in the try key lock, uh, let's see here, function pick up blue key, um, turn that on, try key lock. If has blue key true, well then key lock is going to get a new value. It's going to get a new value of unlocked, right? Now, hold on, before we go any further, is this the right thing to put here? If has blue key equals true? Well, listen folks, the equal sign does not mean in computer science what it means in algebra. Okay, if you want to look and see if two things are equal to each other, you can't use one equal sign. In computer science, one equal sign means take this value on the right and put it in this object or this container on the left. So this line, what it does is it takes this value and it makes key lock equal to unlocked. It's not checking to see if key lock is equal to unlocked. In order to do that, we have to use two equal signs. If you want the computer to check and see if two things are equal to each other, you got to use two equal signs. Because otherwise, what this computer, what the computer is going to do, is it's going to take true and it's going to put it in this value. It's going to make it true, and we don't want that. We don't want to change the value in has blue key. We just want to check and see if it's equal to true or not. And if it is, key lock equals unlocked. And you can have a message. Okay, so this message will come up if you turn the key in the door, but well, I guess that's all we need for now. Okay, now what about this combo lock? Um, for the combo lock, what you're going to do is when someone clicks on it, Okay, when they click on it, on click, try combo lock. You need a box that pops up and people are going to type in some sort of code or combination. And if it's the right combination, then the lock will unlock. And if it's not the right combination, then the lock will stay closed. And so what we want the computer to do is we want what we want JavaScript to do is what's called a prompt. It's going to do a prompt and then it's going to show the user some sort of message and give them a place to type and then whatever they type in is going to get saved. Um, uh, you take the lock in your hand and you enter the code. And that's going to give him a box to type in. But we want to we want to capture whatever comes back from that. So we're going to create a, a variable. Uh, let's call it. Uh, 
combo try. I don't know. Combo try. So whatever they type in is going to get stored in combo try. Okay. And if And remember, we want the computer to check and see if two things are equal to each other. We don't want it to start changing values and reassigning things. So we're going we're to use those double quotations. Oops. If combo try <coughs> equals, you know, whatever the combination is. Now, you could go ahead and put whatever the combination is right here. What should the combination be? Um, science or um, yeah if combo try equals science so in other words if, if they put in the right combination um, then you want combo lock to become unlocked. Unlocked. Okay. Now Probably display a message. You pull on the lock and it opens. Toss the lock on the floor. And so let's go ahead and save this and test it and see how we're doing so far. You can you could test some of this stuff in here. Oh yeah, see this works. This is where you type it in. Um, and let's put in something that's not right. And nothing happens. We should probably have an error message. Uh, if combo try equals science, do all this stuff. Else, so if combo try, do this if it equals science. If it doesn't equal science, do this. Alert. You pull on the lock. but it's still locked. Mm. You pull on the lock, but it's still locked. There you go. Um, science. You pull on the lock and it opens. You toss the lock on the floor. Okay. Um, click on, let's see, it's not doing anything yet. Function try key lock. If has blue K true, key lock unlocked, alert, you slide the key into the lock. Oh, I don't have the blue key, that's why it's not doing anything. So. If you have the blue key, do all that stuff. Otherwise, do something else. Alert. Tuttle, tuttle, tuttle. Still locked. There you go. 
So if you try to click on this with no key, it does that. If you go get the key, oh. <laughs> when we click on the key and pick it up, it should disappear. <laughs> and this is where, you know, handling the computer code is separate from changing what your user sees. And that can be a little bit confusing sometimes, but we have the key even though we can still see the key on the ground. So if I click on this, it should say, uh-oh, still locked, huh? Pick up blue key, you click the blue key, has blue key equals true. If has blue key equals true, key lock equals unlocked, alert, you slide the key into the lock, you feel the pins go up and down, then you turn the key, the door pops open. Hmm. What about over here? Hmm, it's peculiar. Well, I guess the, the question is, why isn't it working? Is it not changing the value of our variable? We can actually test that out by adding a console log where it says try key lock. It says you click the key lock. Let's go ahead and change this console log to we can actually just put in here uh, has blue God dang it key okay so this is going to print out the text has blue key then it's going to tell us what the value of has blue key is And so I come back here and reload and click on this lock. Still locked. And whoa, what happened here? Ha what? Oh. You know what? I think this just has to do with the fact that it, um, takes a while for it to for the changes to catch up what if I do it now still locked has blue key equals false okay well we're expecting that here we go has blue key is false two of them if I click on this key however hmm okay well that tells us that the has blue key uh, variable is not updating. Is it even saying, oh, you know why? Because we never told it to actually run this program when the blue key is clicked. So we got to come up here to blue key and on click. And the function we want to run is pick up blue key. Now, everything.
everything should work. There we go. Now it's running our code. And everything works. And everything works. All right. So what we should probably do is, oh, well, one thing is we got to make that key disappear when we pick it up. And we can do that when we pick up the blue key. Well, we're in JavaScript right now. And we want to do something to an HTML element. And if you want to do something to an HTML element from JavaScript, you have to you have to show the computer where it is. Is that a good way of explaining it? Um, basically, you have to call that object by its long name. And its long name is document dot get element by ID and then in parentheses and quotes we tell it what the ID is what is the ID of that key well the ID of that key is blue key uh, oh we don't need to put PNG because we just need the ID ID is blue key okay so document.getElementById blue key and then we want to hide it. So we're going to access the style um, property or method or I can't I don't know what the right term is, but but we want to style it, okay? Just like with, with our CSS which controls how things look. Well, making something invisible is controlling how it looks, right? So we're going to go style um, display none. So when I click on this, it should just disappear. And indeed it does. So now we have the key, we picked it up, we can't see it anymore, we click on it, the lock pops open. Now remember, we want, said we wanted that button to show up when all of the locks were unlocked. And so basically, there's probably different ways to do this, but in my mind the way that makes sense is after I unlock one lock I should check the room to see if all the locks are unlocked. And so let's go ahead and create yet another function. Check the room, maybe? I don't know. Function check the room. And this is going to get called when we unlock a lock. So if a key lock is locked, Or how about this? How about if key lock equals unlocked and combo lock equals unlocked? Hmm, is that what I want to do? Maybe not. I was going to say, if they're both unlocked, then show the button to leave the room. 
But there's more than one possibility. If key lock is unlocked, maybe we can leave the room, but maybe we can't. Because combo lock might still be locked, right? So let's do this a little bit differently. If key lock was unlocked. Then if combo lock is unlocked, then that button, we want to show that button, and the idea of that button was escape so we want to show that so remember we got to call it by its long name if you tell it hey you know show the escape button JavaScript doesn't know what the escape button is it's gonna not know what that is so we got to call it by its long name get element by ID escape all right, so now it's like, oh, oh, that's what you want me to do. Okay, and we're gonna go style. Dot display equals. Um, all right, so there's different kinds of displays we can do. Uh, style dot display. We used hidden, of course. Um, used hidden because we wanted to hide it. Sorry, we used none because we wanted to hide it. Wait, do we use visibility or display? Escape. Oh, visibility hidden. Okay. All right, in that case, let's just do visibility. Equals visible. It was hidden, but now it will be visible if both of these things are unlocked. Otherwise, okay, so if the combo lock is unlocked, then do this. Otherwise, um, let's see, do I need that? I think I can just do if key lock is unlocked then check to see if combo lock is unlocked. If key lock is not unlocked, hmm. No, I think we do need an else statement up here. If combo lock is unlocked, show the button else alert push on the door but the padlock sorry the combo lock is still locked All right. Then, if the key lock is unlocked, then do all this stuff. Otherwise, alert. Try to turn the doorknob. Still locked. Okay. I don't know. Is that it? Is that everything? That might work.
All right, so reload. Uh oh, got an error on line 67. Oh, it doesn't like that else. Function. All right, if key lock equals unlocked. Oh. Okay. Maybe I need to move this. Here. If else, if else. Okay. <laughs> Gets a little confusing with all these curly braces here. All right, just give that a second to update. I could try it over here, I guess. Um, click on this, still locked. Click on this, locked. Let's come over here and get the key. Pick it up and put it in your pocket. Let's go ahead and enter the code. It opens. Click on this. It opens because we have the key. And now, ah, the button didn't show. Hmm. Oh, haha. <laughs> That's because we just wrote this function, but we never actually told it to do this check the room thing. So, the way we tell it to check the room, which remember, check the room just means do whatever's in this check the room function. The way we tell it to do that is, okay, if you try the door, sorry, if you try the key lock, and all this stuff happens, at the very end, go ahead and check the room. Check the room after you try the key lock, and also check the room after you try the combo lock. Alright, so combo lock. Try to turn the door knob still locked. Oh, okay. Alright, I don't need it to. Okay, so now it's checking the room even when. Okay. I guess I don't need to check the room every time. I just want to check the room after a, after something is unlocked. So let's move this into this section of code where something is actually unlocked. Check the room. And same thing with down here. Check the room. I don't need it to check both times or under all circumstances. Just want to check when a lock is unlocked. All right, so got rid of that. Got the blue key. Opened it up, and there is my button. Now, how do we actually make it take us to the victory page? Well, all we need to do there is go up to that button, and remember we said this is just a note to ourselves. We want to go to new HTML. Well, how do we actually do that? Let's just Google it up real quick. Uh, JavaScript. Go to URL. How to redirect to another web page. Window location.href equals and then the URL. We'll just copy that. Window location. Oh, and if you want to prevent people from just hitting the back button to go back back into the escape room, you could use this over here, window location.replace. 
but I'm just going to use this window location href um, we do have a little bit of a problem with we've got double quotes here and double quotes here and that's not good because remember the double quotes tell the computer where things start and where things end so I think you can see that would be a problem if it thinks that something is starting here and ending here when really it's starting here and ending here. So the way we can do that is just use different quotes. Use the single quotes instead for this and it should work. Because now it knows that this starts here and ends here and it knows that this starts here and ends here. All right. And we lost our button. <laughs> That's okay. Just do it all over again. Grab the key. Unlock the lock. Enter the code. And our button opens, and when we click on this, oh, it's not letting us do it. I wonder if that's just because we're in Web Lab. Let's try it over here. Grab the key, unlock the lock. Enter science. Uh oh. Why did we go to W3 schools? Oh, I'm such a dummy. <laughs> because I just copied and pasted the URL. I didn't actually change it to our URL. Our URL is just new.html, right? new.html Got a good feeling about this one. Oh, for crying out loud. There we go. We have escaped the room. All right, so. That is how you can make a very simple escape room. Um, you know, someday I'd like to figure out how to make uh, cooler locks and things. Um, oh, one thing real quick before I let you go. Um, some people said they were a little bit confused about the locks. You know, when you click on this thing and it asks you for your combination, it could be anything, right? It could be a four-letter co combination or a... Uh, 120 letter combination and so usually the way we do this for escape rooms is we will actually give the person instructions uh, and you enter the code and then you could if you wanted to help them out you could tell them that this is a let's see science is a six letter word right six letter word And then when you click on this, it gives them a little hint. Six letter word. All right, so if you've got any uh, questions or comments, um, ideas, 
or if you want to make an escape room and then link to your escape room in the comments down below, uh, that would be wonderful. All right, guys, good luck. Uh, have fun.